How's it going, guys? We have a medium difficulty question for a path for the different steps here. We've got a 56-year-old woman who has multiple myeloma. So we're looking at a serum protein electrophoresis here where you can see that the gamma region spike, that's your M protein spike. M means monoclonal, and it's going to be an IgG kappa lambda aminoglobulin light chain spike. Okay, so in multiple myeloma, you have plasma cells that are abnormally secreting the kappa lambda light chains. Immunoglobulins are mature B cells. They normally secrete immunoglobulins. Now, even though they're hyper secreting immunoglobulins, these are not functional and patients can actually have immunocompromised state. Immunoglobulins are proteins and these are flying around and they're depositing in different tissues. They can deposit in the heart, cause cardiac amyloidosis with S4 heart sound diastolic dysfunction. They can deposit in the kidney, cause renal amyloidosis is a nephrotic syndrome, should I say is our correct answer. The highest yield cause of renal amyloidosis in Yosemite is multiple myeloma. Okay, so those immunoglobulin light chain proteins, not only are they flying through and uh, you'll find them in the urine as Benz Jones proteinuria, but you find them in the renal parenchyma itself as beta pleated sheets that have refractory and uh, reflective properties that give it a dual color with uh, biopsy and congruent stain. Okay, they actually ask that. That's not me trying to be hyper descriptive here. They'll have they'll have uh, alpha helix beta pleated sheets. For amyloidosis, it's beta pleated sheets. It sort of makes sense if you think about it. So patients can get hypercalcemia, not hypocalcemia, which is why C is fucking wrong. Okay, so the plasma cells that are abnormally proliferating. In multi-myeloma, you're gonna have greater than 10% on bone marrow biopsy. Okay, so when you do the serum protein electrophoresis, which shows your M protein spike here, the next best step in management for TCK and 3 is going to be bone marrow biopsy. Okay, and greater than 10% plasma cells, that's multiple myeloma. Patients can have under 10% plasma cells and be asymptomatic. It's called MGUS. Okay, so monoclonal gammopathy of undetermined significance. On the, on the cusp of 10%, it's called smoldering myeloma. US simile is not going to play tricks. In other words, even though you can see other things, like if you do a smear and you see plasma cells with clock face chromatin, they're not gonna have that as a next best step in management after the M protein spike. As, as far as would you do that before the biopsy? In other words, no. They're just gonna have the SPEP as we have here, followed by the bone marrow biopsy. But the clock face chromatin on a smear, if they show it to you, I've made other clips on that, you gotta be aware of that as well. But you're gonna have the plasma cells causing lytic lesions of bone. And these lytic lesions can occur pretty much anywhere. They can give you uh, lesions of the skull. They can give you lesions of the long bones. There's an NBME question floating around where they give you a humeral lytic lesion in multiple myeloma. And you're gonna get hypercalcemia as a result. 8.4 to 10.2 is normal, so be elevated. MCV, you say, well, why is that elevated? It's a little bit weird. It's not B9 or B12 deficiency. It's just, it's just general bone marrow malproduction of RBCs because you, you have a neoplastic process uh, ensuing. Okay, so certain things like alcohol can slow bone marrow production of RBCs. Malignancy can slow bone marrow production of RBCs and they can come out larger. There's an NBME question floating around where they give multiple myeloma with an MCV of 108. Okay, so it's possible. And then the proteins in the urine here are just your Benz Jones proteinuria. Now you're also going to have an increased ESR, and that's because you've got with, with uh, RULO formation. Okay, and that's because the immunoglobulin light chains are sticking to the RBCs, and they cause the RBCs to stick to each other, and they're going to sediment with the centrifugation. They're heavier the RULO formations. So. Not hypocalcemia, we'd have, we'd have hypercalcemia. Choice B, circular aggregates of hyaline's fucking wrong. So that's going to be your chymal still Wilson nodules in diabetic glomerulosclerosis. Okay, it's a lengthy seminar, do 40 minute discussion. But diabetes, also nephrotic syndrome, no blood in the urine. And 
first change in the kidney is hyperfiltration, where your GFR is actually increased. Holy shit. Okay, because the glucose crossing the basal membrane is going to pull water with it. And that's why you get polyuria. Okay, and then of course you get the non enzymatic lacosylation of the base membrane, thickening of the glomerular base membrane, the first histological change in diabetes with loss of the size and charge barrier, and ultimately nephrotic syndrome. And, and your GFR will decrease as renal failure progresses, but initially you have high GFR and they assess it. And the non enzymatic lacosylation, thickening of the base membrane early. But chymal still will scenario is more of a late finding. The pink circles, eosinophilic means pink. So you have eosinophilic appearing circles in uh, the kidney on biopsy. Okay. They actually look like squamous pearls, even though completely unrelated. The squamous keratin pearls that you'll see with squamous cell carcinomas, not related whatsoever, but they actually look kind of similar, pink circles. Wrong fucking answer. Choice D increased hemoglobin A2, wrong fucking answer. It's going to be beta thalassemias. Also a lengthy seminar. If a patient has a microcytic anemia despite a normal iron and ferritin, you want to think about thalassemia until proven otherwise. And you do hemoglobin electrophoresis. If it's beta, you're going to have increased HbA2, which is alpha-2 delta-2 and HbF, alpha-2 gamma-2, normal hemoglobin, hemoglobin A or A1, so alpha-2 beta-2. So in adults, uh, for about beta thalassemia minor, sick kids, beta thalassemia major, alpha thalassemia, if it's an adult and you have only one or two mutations, it's going to be a normal hemoglobin electrophoresis. A sick kid with HBH, beta-4 tetramer, fatal in utero, hemoglobin barred, so that's a gamma-4 tetramer. But thalassemia, what I want you to know is not just target cell nonsense. Okay, that's, that's sort of first-year med student. You rely on that as a crutch scenario. What I want you to know is that Thalassemia is the answer when you have a microcytic anemia despite a normal iron and ferritin, or you have a microcytic anemia that is non-responsive to iron supplementation, with the implication being that you have a normal iron ferritin because you've been supplementing it. And just going back to kindergarten real quick is thalassemia is just inability to produce one of the hemoglobin chains, alpha or beta for alpha beta thalassemia respectively. Wrong fucking answer. Should I see small bodies wrong fucking answer? So obviously those are your circular ring-like uh, calcium deposits that you can get with certain malignancies. There's like 50 different malignancies that you can actually get some normal bodies in. There tend to be four that show up across some of the enemy me exams. So mesothelioma, meningioma, papillary, thyroid carcinoma, serous adenocarcinoma of the ovary. Okay. I only know they show up in like 50 different uh, malignancies because I've tried making questions where I would have some old bodies as a wrong answer, but literature will say that they can sometimes happen in other cancers, but uh, they're just a biopsy fund you have to be aware of for certain malignancies. Wrong fucking answer. <laughs> 